and I am proud of that, Mr. Speaker. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker. The Right Honourable David Kerr. Mr. Speaker, it's an absolute pleasure to take a call in the third reading of the Families Package Income Tax and Benefits Bill. But I listened to the contribution from the Minister of Finance, Grant Robinson, and I just wonder what planet that man is on. Because this isn't about, as Dr. Megan Wood said, is about delivering to 88,000 children and lifting them out of poverty. I know we're only 10 days out of Christmas. But why was the government passing a package that's so generous to me? Because I'm a huge beneficiary out of what's happening here. We're wiping the tax cuts that are currently in legislation, ostensibly to make sure there's enough money for a tertiary package. And I'm one of those people with three teenage kids about to start the university uh, uh, study. So they're going to be better off. Or Potentially, I'm going to be better off by 10 or 12,000 each one. And then, not only that, but then I looked through the legislation and found the winter energy payment there. And I don't need to declare a conflict of interest, I'm sure, but I'm eligible for the $700 winter energy payment. And I tell that me those members on the other side, I very much doubt that I'll spend that to lower my energy bills, and I certainly assure members on the other side that I won't be one of those that opt out. Because if this government's stupid enough to pass a package that they say is delivered to people in poverty, and they spray around taxpayers' money as liberally as this, and I'm a beneficiary, give me one reason why I should opt out of that, generation, uh, that generosity. Now, I do expect in my first reading speech, there was one other bonus that might have been available, the baby bonus. I'm not sure I'll make it. I'm not sure I'll make it, so that might be a saving to the government. Madam, uh, Mr Speaker, I said earlier to my learned colleague, the Honourable Chris Finlayson, urgency is a wonderful team-building exercise for the opposition. And I want to acknowledge the team that we've had here who have thoroughly... Well, Karen Markinalty, Order. Karen Markinalty, interrupt again. That's all he's done throughout the last 14 hours. I don't think he's taken a call apart to ask for one closure, and I think that was lost because he got it wrong. I have never seen an op a, a government through a period of, um, of urgency so demoralised, so demoralised as this opposition has presented hundreds and hundreds of amendments, they've all been voted down, not even considered by the government for their merit to tidying up some vessy, very messy legislation. So what we see over the last 14 hours is a shambolic process, but it's a continuation of 44 days of shambolic government. Shambolic government. There are many, many useful amendments which we offered in good faith to the government. And Chris Farfoy interjects again. I don't think he's taken a call for the last 14 hours. Very vocal now as we get towards the end of urgency. But those amendments could have been very, very useful, but they were all rejected with arrogance. And I have been around this place for a while. And in my opinion, arrogance normally comes after about three terms of government. And what we're seeing here is we're seeing arrogance after about three weeks of government. So God help New Zealand voters as we move towards the next election. Madam Speaker, uh, Mr Speaker, I should say, I do. I want to take this off. Well, I won't make any comment on that. But, but I do want to say to all members of this House, I won't be here next week, so I want to take this opportunity of acknowledging the tremendous effort that's put in, put, been put into this debate by my colleagues. I want to wish them the very, very best for Christmas. They deserve a break. They've worked extremely hard. To the government members, I also take this opportunity of wishing you a very Merry Christmas. Have a good break. But over that break, just think about... No, I'm not going to leave it there. 
Chris Hipkins wants me to leave it there, but I've got an important message, particularly for the Leader of the House. Government's not about student politics, Mr Hipkins. This stuff gets serious, and the voters of New Zealand deserve a government that's truly got to focus on the issues. And as the government uh, members reflect over the next uh, the Christmas break on what a shambles it's been in the last 44 days, what a shambles this urgency process has been with them, I want them to reflect on the fact that it won't be too long before this House needs to sit again and tidy up many of the inaccuracies and foolhardiness and stupidity that's been written, written into legislation tonight as we pass the Family Package Income Tax and Benefits Bill. As I said um, to the House earlier, I don't consider myself a person that should have benefited by the benefits that are given in this bill. But if the government really thinks that I'm in desperate financial circumstances and wants to extend its largesse and generosity to me, well, I'd be silly not to take it, and I intend to. So I say to those members, as they reflect over the Christmas break, just remember that with the perks comes responsibility. The Honourable Tracy Martin. Kia ora, Mr Speaker. Thank you very much.